Hey, everybody, welcome to The Buck Brief. Aaron Wexler back in the mix. Non-lib take on uh, Instagram and TikTok and the social media. She's a conservative commentator, content creator, and all that good stuff. Um, let's, let's just jump right to it. You say that there are girlies who like Kamala, and you did a girlies for Kamala video. Why do girlies like Kamala when it comes to this election? Like, what... What is it about Kamala other than the fact that she's female and that she's not Trump appeals to them? See, Buck, the, let me just say, your analysis is wrong because you're assigning logic and reason to women. <laughs> that's where I think, I think that's where the mistake begins. I, I really don't think that women are as logical. And I actually think that's a huge uh, gap on the right right now. So what we try to do is we try to impose our logical thinking onto a liberal left-leaning voter, onto a female voter, and I, I don't think for the most part they think like us. So I know, you know, Ben Shapiro has that famous quote, facts don't care about your feelings. Well, I actually say the opposite. I think feelings don't care about the facts. They don't want to hear that, you know, Trump doesn't plan on instituting any sort of that abortion up since the overturning of Roe v. Wade matters that he wants to institute a protection on national IVF. That's all that, you know, it's irrelevant. And they actually probably believe the opposite of those policies. These women ha are, have been they're in a like you know a, a mental chokehold from the democrats to believe that the right hates women and the right will take away all their rights and if you ask any of these women under trump for the four years he was president they can't answer you so i i just think we fundamentally have misunderstood the female voter and the left has just the, the left has made it so a female voter walks into a voting booth now and even in the privacy of that booth and the anonymity where no one will know who they vote for they think they will be a horrible person if they vote for Trump and uh, they vote off of an abortion that they will likely never get. So that, that's what we're dealing with right now. I, I cannot explain beyond that. All the celebrity stuff around Kamala, I know that that we w would expect it, but I, I think it's it's particularly uh, interesting to me because and, and the you know media celebrity, uh, the whole machine that's behind her. Mm -hmm. they've been complaining, and I mean them, not you and me and, and our side of this, they've been complaining for four years that Kamala was awful and a huge disappointment to Biden. And now it's, she's amazing, she's a savior, and she's going to, like, defeat Donald Trump in this election because of how great she is. I guess we're just not supposed to notice? Is that, is just, like, that never happened? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're obviously all too, we should all be too stupid to notice. And the thing is, people on the left are. What they're realizing is most Americans, I actually, I don't believe this. I believe most Americans actually are aware of what's going on. They care deeply. But I think there are enough voters, especially on the left, where listen, if, if any of this, if any of the events that happened this summer, which by the way, great relaxing August for all of us, right? It was supposed to be quiet time. Yeah. And now we're all dealing with this totally upside down election cycle. But if any of this happened on the right, we would be up in arms. There would be a uh, I don't want to use the words civil war because everyone throws those around now for very different reasons. But, you know, there'd be total unrest in the party. There'd be mutiny within the party over the fact that someone who was not democratically elected was somehow just handpicked by a few like WEF globalists on the top and just placed there. So uh, we would never allow it. But that's because we're independent thinkers. And on the left there. So, yes, they totally fell in line and they take their marching orders and the marching orders changed. And that's how they just can flip a switch somehow and and totally support Kamala. I do think, though, a lot of people, you know, when, when your wallet is hurting you, you do realize what's going on. So there have been some great clips. I think it was on CNN, but I'm, I'm wrong. You might be familiar with this clip where they went to a barber shop and it was a bunch of black men. And they asked them, do you think Kamala's black? And the guys said, no, <laughs> you know, she's not black. And they cut back to the white reporter back at the you know news station. And, and he says, well, they're they, like, they don't really know what they're talking about, you know, some white reporter. So I do think there are a lot of people who recognize what's going on. But um, I think they just don't get a lot of information. We know that most of their information comes through mainstream media. They a lot of people are not on Twitter. They don't see what's going on or they're in an echo chamber. So I, I think what we are doing and putting information out, like people who are listening to this, that post that you're putting on your book, on your Instagram, whatever it is, even if it changes one person's mind, I think that's really important. And you continue to just make sure you're putting information out there because the more people see and are, you know, the more their narrative is challenged, perhaps they'll actually open their mind and vote the right way this fall. I have a critical question that you in particular, I think, Aaron, have the expertise to give a, a definitive answer to. 
Is Minnesota Governor Tim Walz a low T soy beta? Oh, of course. Yes. Tim Waltz is the lowest T soy betas. The man, I don't think the man has tea in him. And uh, the closest he got to war was declaring war on his own people during COVID and sending tanks after them <laughs> to, to keep them at home, to keep the white people at home while other people burn the cities down. So, yes. I got I to gotta find out. Did you see the Jesse Kelly? I mean, you and I know Jesse Kelly's hilarious. He had a tweet about how Tim Waltz claimed that he got PTSD from his deployment to Italy. Yes. <laughs> and Jesse made made the observation that apparently Tim Waltz got into some cold pasta and has never been the same since. <laughs> I, like... I I didn't see that, but I've just seen I've seen a lot of people. Everyone should be posting photos from their most beautiful vacations. This would be a, maybe a funny trend where it's August. A lot of people are away. People should post photos saying got PTSD just like Tim Waltz from here. And it's just to be wherever they are in the world and the country, because the man was in beautiful Italy and he, you know, Talking about stolen valor, I just think it's even worse than that because the stolen valor, that's it's you know, that's it's one thing to say that you served when you didn't and you had a certain status and position and rank that that he actually did not. But then on top of that, to allow people to uh, think that he has PTSD <laughs> from those things. It's just it's just beyond the man is such a phony. But back to what we were saying at the beginning, I don't think people care. I think that people People want to believe believe and at the end of the day i think a lot of women are going to vote because they think that tim waltz is going to protect the rights that evil dictator donald trump is supposed to take away and so all this talk about stolen valor is kind of a moot point with them so i just need to know uh, aaron for our, our audience that's watching on the youtube which if you're listening on audio buck brief on youtube soon we're going to have more subscribers than the guy who shows you how to like clean his fly swatter with vinegar or something. You know, we're really, <laughs> we're really rocketing up the YouTube ranks. The good news is we have like a hundred thousand people downloading the podcast. The bad news is the YouTube is growing slowly. Please subscribe to the buck brief. And one of the benefits of it is that you can see things like, are, are you, did you like, uh, did you like sneak into a 12 year old's bedroom here to be able to do <laughs> this, this podcast? Buck. Buck, I am not a leftist uh, drag queen story hour reader, okay? That's, that would be sneaking into a child's bedroom. No, I'm actually uh, northeast. I'll say in an undisclosed location, but I'm in a, a very nice... Uh, you're in a family. Like, I know. You're in a family I'm home, like a fam and I know who's family. I'm in a family I'm home. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So for any but it is funny. Like, the uh, decor yeah, every... is very... The decor is very, like, like 1995, you know... Yes coastal coastal new england bedroom i'll just put it that way it's it is coastal new england bedroom that's exactly the vibe i, I it's like I'm, I'm walking a fine line here actually not the location that i don't want people to know about but I, I can't offend the people who decorated this because just in the chance they ever see this clip i i need to be welcome back um but i also don't want anyone thinking that this is how i decorate my space <laughs> so so if you're listening and you're not on youtube definitely subscribe yeah see because then you then you'll know YouTube. what i'm talking about and you can fill up the comments below in the video with what you think of the decor choice, for example. But, you know, there's important <laughs> stuff going on right now, and uh, things are changing so rapidly. It's a crazy election. How can you keep tabs on it all? Look, we've got a weekly newsletter that's coming out, and it's going to give you the latest and greatest in politics and policy and also in the markets. Now you're saying, Buck, hold on. You know something about politics, maybe. Uh, but markets, economics, uh, the stocks, how do you... Oh, I'm partnering with somebody to bring that component to the newsletter. His name is Brad Thomas. And we're going to be doing this on behalf of Wide Moat Research, uh, which Brad has been running for years to give people incredible financial advice and ways to really profit in the market. So we're going to give you the best of politics, the best of economics, publishing a weekly newsletter so you can make key moves to position yourself to take advantage of what's coming. If you want to be prepared, go online to this website, theurgentmessage.com. You can sign up for free to get my steps to help you prepare and profit in the stock market, especially given this upcoming election. It really is the time to get up to speed. The website to go sign up for free for this weekly newsletter, just once a week, and it's great content, theurgentmessage.com. Aaron, uh, I, I think Trump's going to win, and I think everyone needs to calm down. I'm not saying they can lose focus, but I think this, like, oh, like I'm so scared, so scared. You know what I mean? I can smell the soy milk. I don't want to hear this nonsense. I think Trump's going to get it done. No, I, I listen, I pray you're right. So when I say I disagree with you, it's not. I think Trump does win in terms of like if we have an honest election. 
but I don't know that that's what we get to have. And I think that the same way, you know, a few weeks ago, you had me on, or I guess a couple months ago at this mm. point, and uh, we were talking about what wow, would happen was with Biden. Like, was that like a little shade? Has it been too long? She's like, a few <laughs> weeks. Maybe it was a few months ago you had me on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it was just, no, it's, you know, it's just when time warps because it's, you know, amazing when you have like five, uh, like worldwide events that usually happen in someone's lifetime all in the span of a week. And so I forget time is just a funny concept right now. But uh, but you had me on right before Biden bowed out, should we say? Bowed out, was no, pushed out, out, was threatened. Yeah, shoved out. Yeah, that that totally SOB out. cost me a stake to Clay because yes. he, couldn't, he couldn't finish it off. He was on the five-yard line. All he had to do was run it up the middle. But no, Pelosi and Schumer and Obama. Well, for any loyal listeners, you might remember that the last time I was on the show, Buck asked me what I thought was going to happen with Biden. And I said that I thought they were going to try to kill him. And then they tried to kill Trump. So I was I was like somewhat correct, but on the wrong guy. And then they still pushed Biden out. So I, I feel like I'm owed like a coffee next time I see you for that call, maybe. Uh, but but uh, I just bought myself a free coffee, y'all. But back to what I think, I, I think same way that we thought we were in the draft before with, with we're along for the ride now the democrats they always manage to take control they're so good at mobilizing they're so good at consolidating i think they're devious i think they truly believe the ends justify the means and they believe that they can do whatever it takes to win you know i'm looking at the results coming out of ilhan omar's race last now, how did that happen? That's really odd, right? No votes ever. All the other, I don't know if you are if you were watching that yesterday, but um, all the votes for her district uh, were at zero percent. All all the other uh, uh, elections, all the races around her, they had been tallying their votes long before. And then in the span of thirty minutes, I believe they all of a sudden had over ninety five percent of the votes counted and in her favor. So I, I just am very nervous. I think Soros was really smart in putting DAs across the country. The DOJ is totally out of our hands, totally in the pockets of this movement that deeply believes that anything goes for them to have the results that they want. So um, I'm not as optimistic as you. I would love to be wrong. I would love to take you to a steak dinner if Trump wins, because that, that, nothing would make me happier. You know, hunting season's rolling in as you get ready to explore the great outdoors. Look no further than Bear Creek Arsenal, the one-stop shop for everything firearms. With calibers as rare as the versatile, uh, versatile 6 millimeter and the power-packing punch of the 30 out 6 the innovative folks at Bear Creek Arsenal have perfected the balance of outstanding gunsmithing and affordable products. Whether you're hunting small game or pushing for the thrill of an apex predator, they have all the firepower you'll ever need at a price that is simply unbeatable. Need information on new calibers and comparisons? They have a packed blog and in-depth videos that will answer any question you can think of. Remember, you can save even more when you use the code BUCK at BearCreekArsenal.com. Again, go to the website, check out these rifles, check out the calibers, the videos that show you how well they perform. Pick out what you want. Use promo code BUCK. You'll get great savings, and you're also going to be uh, supporting a great American firearms company. Um, Aaron, where should everyone go to follow the latest of libs? I'm sorry, non-libs or non-lib take. I really, I really butchered that one. I, it's been a long That's, day over here. <laughs> oh, you're forgiven. That's okay. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at nonlibtake. On Twitter, it's just Aaron Wexler. And for, you know, again, the loyal listeners of the pod, you should all know that Buck told me not to do different handles and I did not heed his, his advice. And that's why it's a confusing sign off. But you can find me mainly at nonlibtake on Instagram. I, I did also tell her that she could actually have a media career before everyone's like, oh, Aaron Wexler. And now... It's I'm true. It's true. I'm just saying. We're basically you know at I mean? our we're at our one year, I think, one year of friendship anniversary right, right now. So I told her it's a beautiful I was like, You're thing. Gonna get famous. Are you gonna first. be okay with this? And she's like, I don't know. I I like <laughs> I like privacy. I'm like, well, that's gone. So say goodbye to that. You know what I mean? But anyway, she doesn't actually sound. He got like me that. My, on this path. My, I will say my Aaron impersonation <laughs> needs work. You know, like, like hello. Yeah, it needs to be. <laughs> I like how dainty you make me. Literally no one, no one in my life like, would, like, would agree with that. You're like the female Alvin and the Chipmunks or something. You're like, hello. <laughs> I've right. never sounded so dainty and sweet. Thank you for that, Buck. Yeah. And thanks she, to she does, everyone She does for great listening. work. Non-lib take. Aaron Wexler, go check her out. Aaron, thank you for making the time. Good to see you. Good to see you, Buck.